Hello everyone, I am BBD, joined again by... CBM. Yeah. It's a new face every week. Every week. Um, today I have a pretty awesome deck. Uh, let's just say the people clamored for some Ashiok Nightmare Weaver, so... Yeah, we've heard a lot of people say they want us to play Ashiok, and well, we're we going to do it. I was going to play five, but CBM wouldn't let me, so I'm only playing four Ashioks. And because he's a scumbag, because he wouldn't let me play five, but stupid rules. Yeah, um, he's a rules lawyer. But basically, uh, yeah, this is a, a Grixis deck built around the Planeswalkers that this color offers, which there are many, and they're actually all pretty good for the most yeah, part too. Pretty sweet. So uh, yeah, I I actually like this deck a lot. I think it has a lot of cool things going for it, and I want to jump in and talk about it. Uh, first card I will talk about is Ashiok, actually. Um, Three mana is kind of like a sweet spot for Planeswalkers. There's a lot of, when it comes down that early in the game, there's a lot of like inherent power just in being that cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, so as long as the abilities are like anywhere close to being good, it's pretty easy to envision a three mana Planeswalker being playable. In fact, every single three mana Planeswalker has been playable so far, uh, to my understanding. Uh, I mean, the, new, the newest Johnny is a little on the sketchy side. But I, it is technically playable. I, I think that card is better than people give it credit for, too. But, uh, yeah, Ashiok, what she does is her plus two is... She starts at three loyalty, and she can immediately plus two, which is actually the only relevant ability um, that it has the turn it comes down. So it's going to immediately jump to five loyalty, which means it's very hard to kill right off the bat, especially on turn three. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and what it does is it exiles three cards from target player's library. I think it's opponent. Is it an opponent? Yeah, it is only opponent. Okay, from an opponent's library, my bad. Uh, and then the minus X is to put a creature w with CMC X into play. So uh, basically, that's, I don't know, pretty good. You could have a turn four, you could have your opponent's Storm Breath Dragon on turn four. Uh, theoretically, or, or anything like that. So, yeah, there's a lot of power to that, and she does tick up pretty quickly to the ultimate, which is exiling your opponent's hands and graveyards, and it's all opponents too. So uh, that's also very powerful. Any kind of control mirror matchup, you can just basically yeah. play up to the ultimate. Uh, once you ultimate her, then you can start like throwing down your stuff because you don't have to worry about them countering it or killing it or anything like that. So I think the card is pretty cool, and I'm I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, beyond that, it's also it's all, to cut you off. It's also important to note that, like, if you just plus two it every time, it goes to eleven, and then when you ultimate it, it gets to stick around, and it can put any card into play exiled with Ashiok. So like, if you ultimate it and get get creatures from their hand or their graveyard, you can end up putting those into play later on in the game as well. It doesn't have to be off the top of their deck. Yeah, that is uh, that is a very important it's consideration. Pretty sweet. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I think Ashiok's pretty cool, and I know people want to see it, so here it is. Uh, we have Jace, Chandra, and Ralzarek, uh, pretty much mono fours, I like to call this deck. Um, four, four is the luckiest number, besides <laughs> seven, so four is the second luckiest number. Uh, Jace is just a really powerful card, and I think will be very powerful with a new format. It kind of dominates yeah. block constructed. Um, so, yeah, basically I want four of that, and then we want two Chandra Pyromaster, which has been pl see play seeing play in, like, Modern and Legacy. It's just a very powerful card. Uh, we both got to see how powerful it was in the last standard season with, like, the big red, big Boros mm -hmm. decks. So I, I think this card's very powerful, and I, I expect to see a lot of it as well. Uh, it can kill guys, and later in the game, um, like, it supplements our other burn spells, and then later in the game, it's just a source of continual card advantage. Uh, and then Ral Zarek is just, um, I wanted a Ral Zarek over like another Chandra because Chandra just usually doesn't die that much. So I wanted uh, to have like a different unique Planeswalker. And I think Ral Zarek is fine as like a removal spell, uh, sometimes two removal spells. And uh, his ability to untap stuff can combo pretty well with things like uh, the Is It Staticasters we have in our sideboard. Mm -hmm. So I think he's a fine addition. Like he's not. Uh, a blowout card, that's why I only have one, but I think he's still a solid card. Uh, outside of the Planeswalker engine, we have just a bunch of standard cards here. We have like Shock, Dreadbore, and Far and Away as like a mixture of removal spells. I went with Shock over um, Magma Jet just simply on cost reasons. Uh, we have a lot of cards that cost two and three already, and I wanted something cheaper. Uh, Anger of the Gods, I think we'll see a lot of play. Yeah. It's a, and it's uh, just like a very good sweeper against like a lot of the, the decks, like the green-white decks, the red decks, etc. And uh, I, I, yeah, I expect this card to be very good, so it's 
basically the Supreme Verdict S card in this deck. It's basically something that we've been clamoring for for like an entire year now at this point. Like, if we would have had that card in the previous format, like, Chandra would be much better than it is now. Imagine being able to play with Thunder My Hellkite and that card. Like, yeah, Burning Tree like Emissary would not have been nearly as good for as long as it was. Correct. Voice of Resurgence, <laughs> etc. Uh, Read the Bones, we've talked about this before, but we both think this is one of the best cards in the set. Definitely. And um, yeah, it just, it just does everything. It lets you hit the right cards you need. Uh, it lets you lose some life so your opponent can kill you quicker. It's really just really just <laughs> multifaceted. It, um, it, it does feel a lot like, it, it feels a lot like Preordain used to feel, like back in the, the Cobblade days with it. Like you have such powerful cards in your deck and a lot of times you tailor the game based off of you know, the texture of your hand to where you need to find a specific card to win and, you know, you get to go four cards deep and find it. Yep, and <laughs> uh, quite often you do. <coughs> and then uh, Rakdos' return, essentially just a uh, good card against, like, mid-range decks and control decks is pretty much why it's there. Uh, I feel like a lot of times, like, we have the ability to control the board very well with our Planeswalkers, but we have no way to affect their hand, and Rakdos' return is just a very good answer. And I also think that Planeswalkers are going to see a lot of play, and along with Dreadbore, Rakdos Return is a good way to kill a Planeswalker, too. Uh, the last card uh, I want to talk about is Frostburn Weird, which I think this card's very good. Uh, it hasn't gotten a lot of press, but it was very good in Block Constructed, um, just basically for handling early threats from decks. But it also puts a lot of pressure on people. Uh, in the Control Mirror, they have to kill it, or they will die to it, or their Planeswalkers will die to it, because it actually deals a lot of damage um, uninterrupted. And the important thing about Frostborn Weird is it doesn't die to Anger of the Gods. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically the reason for Frostborn weir Weird in here. And then Rakdos Key Rune just kind of ties it all together. Uh, can be a creature, can be uh, mana to ramp us into our Rakdos ret Returns or Far and Aways or the like. Um, so yeah, that's basically the deck. The mana base is a work in progress, but for the most part I feel like we should be able to hit our colors on time. So uh, hopefully it works out too well. Uh, the only, like, two swamps doesn't let us cast Frostburn Weird, but the rest of our mana base does, so that should hopefully not be too big of a problem. But I did want the two swamps to make sure we can cast Ashiok on turn three or Dreadborn on turn two if we need to. Definitely. But, uh, yeah, this is the main deck for the Grixis Super Friend deck, or uh, Mono Fours, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> uh, and we'll jump on to the sideboard. All right, so here we are with the sideboard. We have Thoughtseize and Rakdos' Return, uh, mostly for control decks, uh, any kind of control matchup, but these cards also can be good in like mid-range fest too. Like if Jund is a deck still, or if like uh, black, white, red becomes a big deck, like Thought Season and Rakdos Return will be good in those matchups as well. Um, <coughs> and I don't have any counter spells on the board, I just have discard. And I feel like when you're playing a lot of Planeswalkers and things, you want to just be tapping out every turn mm -hmm. to do something big. And uh, counter spells don't really play into that game plan, which is why I don't have any. Like most of my cards are sorcery speed, and for the most part, I would rather just have like discard to set up my pl set up the way of my planeswalkers rather than <coughs> get in a situation where I have like a syncopate in my hand and a jace, and I have four mana, and I have to decide like am I tapping out to play jace or am I holding open for my counter spell? And if like I, I don't play the jace, maybe I'll lose to what's in play. But if I play the jace and they kill it. Now I'm stuck with the dead counter spell, and I don't really want to put myself in that position. So I think yeah. it's better to have more proactive cards like this. Yeah, I think, <coughs> like, the counter spells are fine when you have other things to do with your mana when they don't do something threatening. Yes. Like Sphinx's Revelation. And since we don't have Sphinx's Revelation, we're just jamming our stuff. Yeah. Yep. Get rid of theirs and <laughs> throw ours into play. <laughs> yep, I agree exactly with that. Uh, three is it Static Casters. I like this card a lot in these kinds of decks because it blocks very well. And even if your opponent doesn't have a lot of one toughness creatures, it still is annoying. Um, mm -hmm. If you ever like assemble two of them, you get to start killing two two toughness creatures. If you ever get one along with Ralzeric, you can do the same thing. Or if you uh, you can use like is it Staticaster to complement Shock or complement like Anger of the Gods to kill Oxon Smiter or things like that. So I think having access to this card is like pretty key in these kinds of decks. Um, and that's just even beyond the fact that it's like very good blocker for like voice of resurgences or like experiment ones and things like that. Plus, there's also like the mono red <coughs> decks that just have a million X ones. Yep. And it just can block everything and kill everything else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, three ratchet bombs. Just Grixis doesn't have a lot of answers to like artifacts or enchantments. Um, I guess you do have ways to deal with artifacts, but 
not really enchantments or things like that. Like Detention Sphere. Like Detention Sphere is a great <laughs> example. Um, and Ratchet Bomb gives you the ability to handle those kinds of cards. And it's also just a very good card against like a lot of the aggressive decks that are going to be loading up on ones or loading up on two drops or whatever. Um, and Ratchet Bomb also is good against like Advent of the Worm and cards like that. You can just put put a bomb in on zero, and you can like tap out with impunity, knowing that if they do play like Advent, you can just kill it with Ratchet Bomb. Yep. Uh, Pithing Needle is for mostly like Planeswalkers. Um, I could see like Aetherling being another thing. Um, I could see some of the gods too, like Heliod could be a big problem for this deck. And Pithing Needle provides you with an answer to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Storm Breath Dragon comes in for a lot of the slower matchups. Again, like mid-range control decks, just as a way to really put some pressure on them. We only have four creatures in our main deck in Frostburn Weird. So it's definitely conceivable that people will side out removal against us. And if we side into Dragon, they may not have an answer, and it kills very fast. Um, yeah, an unimpeded Storm Breath Dragon will kill just as fast as a Thundermont Hellkite. So in that regard, it's it, sometimes even faster. So yeah. in that regard, it's it's just as good as Thundermaw for the matches where we want it. I also like how Thundermaw, or Thundermaw, Storm Breath Dragon um, is complemented very well by Thoughtseize. Like in the matchups where we're wanting to bring in Thoughtseize, mm -hmm. Thundermaw can also come in. There's not a whole lot that can kill it. Thundermaw can come in? Well, basically, <laughs> Storm Breath. There's not a whole lot that can kill Storm Breath Dragon right now. And being able to take you know their one answer with Thoughtseize and then just jam Storm Breath Dragon at them, you just... There's not a lot they can do. They have, they have like one, maybe two turns to draw something before they're just dead. Yeah, like, you, you know, you might see like a War Leader's <laughs> Helix and a Dread Boar in their hands. So you can be like, all right, get your Dread Boar. Yeah. Now you can't Helix the Dragon. Good, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. GLHF, so. Yeah. But yeah, this is the, the Grexus deck. I'm pretty excited to play it, and hopefully it plays out. It looks awesome. Yeah, pretty well, so.